Devalaya. Today I've come up with the world's most inefficient water heater. It might be inefficient, but who cares about that when you've got brute oil burning power? The setup for today's video is very simple. I've just got a length of three quarter inch copper pipe. As you can see, I've got it attached to uh, my hose there. This is also a three quarter hose, so it flows a lot more than the standard half inch garden hose. As you can see, the burner is uh, just going through this, uh, I believe it's a four inch pipe, and the copper tube travels along inside as well, and then it just drops out and exits into this bucket which I've got the probe for my thermometer in. So what I want to do is just basically um, get a rough idea of the temperature increase that I'm getting with this and also the flow rate. Now before anybody starts commenting oh you could do this or do that or something like wrap the copper tube around the, uh, the pipe, yeah there's a lot I could do but this is just you know one way of doing it and it it's not to test efficiency, obviously it's going to be in as inefficient as hell, but I just want to see what sort of temperature rise I can get with something as basic as this. I see a lot of videos and where anybody ever tries to heat water, the first thing they do is wrap miles of copper around a pipe. It's actually a pretty inefficient way because the contact area for the heat to transfer into the copper is, is not good because the edges of the copper are round and they only make minimal contact with whatever they're wrapped around. And also if you uh, look at the surface area of something like a piece of three quarter inch pipe and the surface area of the same length of a four inch pipe or three or two inch they're, they're vastly different the the larger the pipe size has vastly more surface area than than any smaller tube so you're better off just running a bigger tube uh, or a smaller tube inside a larger one and forget about the copper pipe it's really not a good way of doing things at all even though for some reason it's the first thing most people do Okay, so she's running along a bit. It's actually running a little bit lean, I think. But I measured their water temperature, I forgot to show beforehand, which was 22, and now we're getting about 36. So here we are, I've got it cranked a bit more. We've got it up to 60, and she's still climbing. And that's a bit of an idea of the output we're getting. If you had more than one run of copper through there, you could probably put quite a few. You could link them up and get quite a bit of heat out of that. And I see the thermometers climbed up a bit and we're now at 61. Not exactly the quietest way to heat water up. Now I've backed the burner right down and we're back down to 44 but as you can hear it is nice and quiet. Still running the same flow which I will uh, measure for you in a minute. So here I've backed off the uh, air a bit and I'm just running a slightly richer mixture and it's uh, still producing quite good heat as you'll be able to see here back up to 53 and we've still got a really good flow that's more than hot enough to take a shower with and you'd probably want to be cooling it down again anyway And there's the burner just coasting along. As you can see with the blower, I've got the air necked right down just with a bit of cardboard there. But I've got the fuel running pretty good, not too rich, but it's still producing quite a bit of heat.
In these days of idiots and morons and the politically correct bleeding hearts that complain people's personal responsibility is in fact someone else's job, here's some safety tips when using this setup. As you might be using it to heat water to take a shower, think again if you plan to use that glowing red pipe as a heated towel rail. If you try that, you're going to be one pink towel short of your hers and hers monogram set and have nothing to dry your idiot ass on either. Also, don't try to be clever and use that nice hot air coming out the end of that thing for a hair dryer. If you try that, you won't be needing to get any more streaks or highlights done at the hairdressers for quite some time to come, but you will be needing to stock up on hats till the bandages come off. There you go, I've now shut the burner off, it's only uh, blowing out the heat from the burner and what's in the pipe and I'm still getting about a 10 degrees temperature rise. Pretty impressive just from the stored heat. And just to show you the ambient water temperature, there's the, um, the water coming straight out of the hose that I had connected to the other end of the copper pipe. And there's the thermo, a fraction over 23. I thought it was 22, but close enough. Oh, look at that. It's still dropping. Maybe I'm a bit quick anyway. So if you're looking for a way to heat water as inefficiently as possible, this could be the way to go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to uh, subscribe, like and share. And um, if you have any comments or suggestions for future vids, please put them in the section below. Thanks again for watching.